I'll put you in front In front of my melody You are all that matters You are all that matters I'll make room for two You and I, Jesus Christ You are all that matters You are all that matters Away, away, you are all that matters. 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 I'll put you in front, in front of my melody. You are all that matters, yes, Lord. You are all that matters. And I'll make room for two. You and I, Jesus Christ, you are all that matters. You are all that matters. Away, away, 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 you are all that matters. I'll put God in front, in front of my melody, cause he's all that matters, he should be all that matters, I've got to make room for two, just he and I alone, He is all that matters, he should be all that matters. Oh yes, oh yes, God is all that matters. Oh yes, oh yes, God is all that matters. Oh yes, oh yes, my God is all that matters. Oh yes, oh yes, my God is all that matters. <coughs> Away, away, he is all that matters. Away, away, he is all that matters. Away, away, God is all that matters. Away. God is all that matters. God is just too much. He's just amazing. He's psychedelic. Well, psychedelic is a word that I was on air some time back and the Holy Spirit ministered it to me. I've heard a lot of word. I've heard a word that sounds like it, but it's not the same thing. Actually, mine is psychedelic and it means that it's beautiful beyond words description. I don't know what psychedelic means. I I found out, I got to realize that there was a word called psychedelic. I'd never really known about it. And I forgot to look out what it means. But mine is psychedelic. And it means that it's beautiful beyond words description. And so there's a woman of God, a pretty woman of God on fire that I actually um, look up to and revere a lot. And I thought about her today. And just a few minutes after I thought about her, you know how the feeling is so strong, how you know you have to talk to someone, you really need to get to this person, you really need to connect to this person. That's how strong the feeling was. And it didn't just get like how many minutes just after she called me. It has been the best ever in like a long while that I had that kind of sensation and then got connected with the person. 
and I just know that this lady was brought in my life in this season for a reason and uh, I'm enjoying every single moment of it enjoying every little bitsy wincy tinsy bitsy moment of it and I'm forever grateful to God that our paths crossed and the best part is she loves God she's very objective she's very analytical I mean like so we're not just going to talk and just stay on 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 the spiritual lane and then bypass the social lane and then just get off the objective lane no there is a balance that's why I love it when we're talking about scenarios when we're bringing things out I love the fact that she's straightforward she's not going to pamper you well she could actually give you a spanking and then blow it after that don't worry baby don't worry darling okay you'll be fine you'll be fine I love that about her so much and so I'm really grateful to you Mom K Kebila for being your awesome self and sometimes I really just look at you I'm like if somebody can be this pretty and love God and serve God and be standing then I don't have a reason why I shouldn't serve God and love God she makes loving God so beautiful so easy and I really like it you know there are some people that they make they make loving God or serving God repulsive they make loving God or serving God look like a burden they make loving or serving God look like unappetizing or unattractive but this woman of God she makes loving God and serving God so sweet so beautiful you just I mean she's just awesome okay so this is me right here I like to tell people who they are to me while they are alive I don't like writing eulogies I don't think it, it helps or it makes any sense because I don't see why I should be writing good things about you when you're not there. Meanwhile, when you're alive, I didn't even tell you anything about it. Okay, it's okay that most people want to make those books and all those things so they need write-ups inside. But what about just telling the person who they are to you while they are alive, you know? anything that's rewarded gets repeated so when you tell them that this thing they're doing is a good thing they see that it's a good thing and so they'll want to replicate it maybe not just for you but for other people as well so if this thing was good enough for princess it would probably be good enough for this other person it's a good thing if she can say that it's really a good thing then i can do it to another person and another person and another person even god loves grateful people so i don't think we as human beings would don't love to be appreciated we do if someone appreciates me for something that I'm I'm really um, sure I did and I was a part of I'll feel happy you know you know it will be a good thing so mom K. Kebila is really an amazing woman and I'm so glad that I got to know you and I'm connected to you if you don't have I as your friend with you again <laughs> the pretty woman of God on fire you need to go to her page and see the good work she's doing on there building women of valor women of virtue women who have stamina women who believe in themselves and they know who they are they know their worth and they won't settle for less yes a lot of women just feel no this is where they have to end this is as far as they can go they don't think they can be better they don't think they can push themselves they don't think they can maximize their potentials you know because of several stereotypes and several things that people have always been scared of i remember sometime they used to tell me that princess don't study too much don't be that big like you'll not get married and i'm like huh so are you guys saying that fulfilling purpose and getting married i should rather get married and fulfill purpose or what are you guys talking about because the last time I checked, God sent me on here to fulfill purpose. Marriage is bonus. Marriage is great, but it's bonus. So what do you guys say? So if God needs me to maximize my potentials, I shouldn't maximize my potentials because I want to get married. Why not think that there is a man who is good enough, who is also maximizing his potential that will be able to find me and marry me? Hey, Nobody is going to tell you that you have to find out for yourself. So Mam K. Kebila is teaching these women that it is possible. Ain't that a beautiful thing? So you go all out. Do all that you have to do. 
exploit your potentials maximize them don't shrink in don't dim your light for people if your light is too bright for them they should buy shades why do you have to dim your light lisa nico said it if people think your light is too bright give them shades don't dim your light for nobody the bible says arise and shine for thy light has come and the glory of the god is risen upon thee come on now like why would you have to dim your light when the lord is telling you to arise and shine he says you're going to shine brighter and brighter onto the perfect day i don't get it so why are you struggling to dim your light really who are you planning to please well as i say city be on the hill cannot be hidden so the people that know your worth and they know they're deserving of you they'll follow you regardless of how bright you are and how right up there you are so thank you mom kate kebila for doing this awesome work in the lives of these women i feel honored to be a part of whatever you're doing i feel really honored okay let's get it on with if i have to talk about this woman i can take the whole of this live stream and do it so let's just get it out for now <laughs> We'll be doing it in bits. Okay, so today, if you're just tuning in, if you're just getting on here, you'll be wondering, like, what is this about? This is a chapter a day, for the record. And what happens here is, we get to know who we are in Christ, the power we possess, the things we should and should not do as children of God here on earth, so we can live a beautiful Christian life here on earth and end up spending eternity with God in heaven. That's the whole idea. So while we're doing that, we create an audio Bible in the process, and then we get to study the Word of God together because we know that there's a lot of diluted word of god out there and people are tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine so we decided why not bring the diluted version rather than standing here or sitting here and badging on another person who just took their time and sent out a message i'd rather just send my own message and then let people listen to both and be the judge of course that's what god has always given us from the onset he didn't just make us robots he gave us the power of choice you have to make a choice you have to look at two things he says i bring before you life and there but i urge you to choose life so he gives you an urge as to what is the good thing to choose so it's the same thing i'm urging you to listen to the undiluted word of god so if you go listen to the, undil the diluted version and you listen to the undiluted version you will know exactly which one is really going to help you so you get on it and that's exactly what happened between jesus and the pharisees because the pharisees were there <coughs> They were not entering and they were not letting the people enter but when jesus came jesus gave them everything that they wanted so it was normal it had to be natural for them to be following jesus because they needed a solution and they knew that jesus carried the solution jesus didn't come there and start badging on the pharisees and sadducees he actually dealt with them once in a while when they were amongst the people because they were trying to get him they're trying to trap him so that's that's the only time he addressed them so for example what i'm saying in essence is if someone who preaches the undiluted word of, the diluted word of god comes into this live stream and tries to get at me i would so give it back to them that's exactly what jesus did he didn't go badging on them he didn't go telling talking to the people only talking to them out the pharisees have deceived you the sadducees have deceived you mm, jesus didn't have time to do that he had a lot of work to do by proffering solutions to people's problems so he just went on and the people were naturally drawn to him because they needed the solutions he was carrying that's exactly what we're supposed to be doing as christians i don't know why you sit around badging other people use that energy that strength and that time and preach the undiluted word of god let people see the word and then make the decisions for themselves don't you think so that would be the best option right yeah so that's why i'm here today okay so on a normal basis we get to sing which is what you got from the beginning we get to pray and hand over the session to god and then we get the birthday party where i give shout outs for people who were born on a particular day and then we pray for them and then we head right on to the bible party the bible party is reading a chapter of the bible and then discussing about it so today our bible party is going to be taken from the book of numbers chapter 28 and it has 31 verses numbers 28 and he has 31 verses so let's get right on with prayer father we thank you for today we thank you for this day that you've made we'll rejoice and be glad in it it's a beautiful and lovely day lord we thank you for your mighty hand of protection for provision we thank you for guidance we thank you for your loving kindness we thank you for all that you've done in our lives you're doing and you're still to do because in everything you work for good to them that love and serve you and are called according to your purpose lord we thank you for 
seen and unseen battles you've been fighting for us we thank you for all your promises because we know that yeah and amen we thank you for your word because he always goes out and accomplishes the purpose for which it is sent lord we just want to say thank you there's so many things we have to say thank you for but we can't even start and finish today because as we keep finishing to say thank you there is a next thing you do you just keep when we think you've done too much you just do it again when we think you've done so much and we just want to get done thanking you you show yourself again in another dimension so lord we say thank you for all that you've been doing you're doing and you're still to do we bless your holy name come and speak to us again in a special way as always let your word come to us like a two-edged sword pressing asunder through the hearts and marrows speaking to us in a special way that only you can understand and get to us through thank you lord increase while i decrease so it's going to be you and you alone that will be seen felt and heard throughout this session of a chapter a day today take the wheel take it from my hand we just can't do this on our own thank you lord god for in jesus name we pray amen amen people amen amen and amen okay there um it actually rained today it was yesterday but it's so hot i don't know what's going on and when it's raining it's so cold and then when it's when the rains are gone it's so hot i don't understand the weather thai weather is something else but anyways that's by the way so let's go so let's do this um am i missing somebody <clears throat> okay so now it's birthday party okay we have a couple of people in the birthday book today but um i'm sure we're gonna get done with it so let's go mr serge and gamba is the first person that is um a very good friend of mine that i had he's a doctor and uh, i used to know him when he was working at the general hospital in bamender it's a very calm composed and soft-spoken person and he speaks french too yeah i remember very well he speaks french his english is really great for someone who speaks french and he's so so good at his work he loves his work i had a lot of treats when he had to do with dr serge and yes it was great it was great there was this little insect that got past me so it was great happy birthday to you mr serge and gambara and the next person is mr lois peters mr lois peters we actually got connected to an online session that we had there was a seminar that we had on whatsapp and we got connected because he was really focused and he knew the things that were happening there and i also saw the way he was responding to stuff and i decided to connect with him as well so that's how we also connected sorry that's how we connected mom lois peters she was actually one of our trainers no yeah she was actually one of our trainers on one session and she was really really amazing she did a whole lot i mean the training was really impactful because her session was very practical it was very relatable and i just had to i could not help people connect with her so i did um the next person was um uh, Mr. Chidiaberry NS. Mr. Chidiaberry NS, we actually got connected on Facebook, I think. Um, it was on a mutual friends post and it has been great. He supports my work. He gets to encourage me on doing things and doing them right. The next person is uh, La Bote Noir. Bote Noir. Actually, this is one of my younger brothers. <laughs> like my younger brother's friends. So it's like basically my younger brother. We grew up together. And um no i got that mixed up forgive me people i got that mixed up bote noir is one of my friends we got connected on facebook yes we got connected on facebook on a mutual friends post and uh it was really great the angles with which they understood the things and you know like i always say i'm a common reader association person so when i go to the comments i actually see different angles to a particular post i'll read the post first and then i get to the comment section and start seeing how people see it the way people view the things and other angles to which you can view a particular situation so that's why i have to have i mostly get multiple angles to some situations not because i'm like super smart but because i always get it from other people okay and then the next person is 
Mam Alima Narudin. Mam Alima Narudin is actually one of my very good friends. She's an elder sister to one of my friends. Originally, we were colleagues. We were working on an online TV some time ago, and then we ended up meeting each other. It had been beautiful all the way. I went to the house. They actually hosted me for a while, and it was like awesome the spoiled miss kata i mean she was taking me like everywhere we're going to places she helped me do my uh, accounts and stuff like that oh my god see it was just all right awesome and she's also the kind of person who loves taking care of the less privileged looking out for the for the weak for the underprivileged or people who can look out for themselves she's always doing that for them that's why i just love her because that's what i also love to do to take care of people who are on the mind people who are looked down upon and all that less privileged people who don't have anything for themselves i just love her like that for that particular reason and then the next person is mr olalekan adebu team miti mr olalekan is the ceo of get mary get mary is an institution that actually helps people to make their loved ones smile to put smiles on their loved ones faces so valentine's day is around the corner i don't believe in that day so much though but people who do let's give them an opportunity to have fun and enjoy it you know i believe in every day for a love day so <laughs> i don't believe in that particular day and more so i don't think it should be valentine's day it should be your name like princess's day kate's day something like that not valentine i don't know valentine i really don't know the guy so it's me who is doing all the loving it's you who is doing all the loving why should we be wishing each other happy valentine's day instead of our names you get the trick that's by the way so if you want to call your loved one and make them happy you want to give them a surprise call you want to tell them who they are you know not you because maybe when you tell them so much they think it's just normal they take you for granted but now you can use some other person's voice to say that you can get to get married so happy birthday to you mr olale khan thank you thank you thank you for being the amazing person that you are he always encourages me i've used get married several times and i would never trade it for anything if i have to do it again i'll do it over and over and over again with get married thank you so much i got to know him through um mr la ogbenila i got to know him through him and um that's when because he's the brand ambassador of get married so when that thing came up i actually saved it and thank god that i saved it it is done wonders and magic to a lot of people people cut, got to break down like people that i know are like hardcore hardcore i actually used get merry on them and they were just like totally broken they were taken aback people were like princess where did you come out with that well get merry did it and it was the whole idea from mr olale khan when you are a solution to problems people are going to naturally run to you a lot of people are going through a whole lot of stress, a whole lot of hard times. If you want to make things beautiful for them, get to Mr. Olale Khan and they are going to so merriment your people, whoever the person is. It could be your sister, father, mother. I've done it to lots of people. I didn't do it only to people that are in relationships with me. No, I did it to, well, they're in relationships with me, right? They're not the erotic kind of relationship. That's what I meant. But I've done it to a lot of people. I've done it to brothers. I've done it to fathers. I've done it to sisters. I've done it to aunties. I don't know if I've done it to uncles here. I don't think I've done it to any of my uncles. <laughs> but I've done it to my dad. I've done it to my sisters. I've done it to lots of people. So it works. It really works. Thank you so much, Mr. Olale Khan, for bringing up that kind of brilliant and beautiful idea. I really love it. You know. And then the last but not the least is Mr. Fun Honore. Mr. Fun Honore Jams Rudolph. Okay. So this guy actually, the first time I got to know him, not physically, the first time I got to know him, he, he posts something on Facebook. I think it's on Facebook or so. It says 1001 reasons. 1001 reasons. So when I first of all saw it, I was so intrigued. I was like, this person is so wise, so smart. I need to get to know him um i think i sent him a friend request but he ignored me that's fair 
I can manage. <laughs> and then I was in this group and someone actually forwarded one of his messages there. I, I, at some point I wasn't seeing his messages anymore because I kind of blocked my Facebook wall. So uh, I could not see a lot of things anymore because there were some things that were going through my wall that I didn't like. So I had to suffer the consequences of not getting even the things I like going through my wall because I blocked it. So I wasn't getting it for a while and I was worried. Since he had not added me as his friend, I still couldn't get it because at least sometimes once in a while I'll get some pop-ups, but I couldn't get it. So someone in a group actually sent me um, sent a message to the group that was 1001 reasons why I was like oh my god this guy again I was like I really need to connect to this guy I don't know if I remembered whether I went ahead to send the friends request again or I went to check if we had become friends or something but I can't remember though that's by the way so all of a sudden a friend of mine also decided to add me to a group that there's a group of very smart people I like to be there because the people are kind of objective and everything and he knows that I'm an objective person even though I'm a child of God, they're always freaking out for people who are children of God. They feel that we're too subjective. They don't think we're objective. Well, however it goes, they told me I needed to join that group because the group is really good. And I'm like, okay, fine. Uh, I'll try it. If I don't like it, I could exit, right? Say, so, yeah, you could exit. If you don't like it, you could exit. And I got there. Boom, 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 boom. Mr. Jam Honore from Ruler was in this group. But I didn't know. I just didn't know. But one thing I knew was that his angle of the way he used to respond to things that we're talking about in the group was interesting. So in my mind, I'm like, I need to connect with this person. That's exactly what I do all the time. You know, when people are like smart, intelligent, I know I can learn from them. I connect with them. There's no shame in that, you know. So I knew I had to connect to this guy. Like, so we kind of connected and now we're friends, like friends, really friends on WhatsApp. And then all of a sudden, boom, boom, boom. Someone posts something about 1001 reasons why in the group. And I was like, you got to be kidding me. What? This is a platter of gold. I know this guy already now. So I got to find out that he was the one who was always putting the thing up. But because his name was different on when he's putting the 1001 reasons, his name was different as the one that was on the group. So that's why I couldn't figure it out, you know. So yes, I was so excited. I was super excited. And I said, I'll go through that process again if I had to, to get connected to this person. So you see, I wasn't mistaken. The way he was responding to things in the groups already caught my attention, which meant it was the same person. Like, so it wasn't just a joke that I said that person who was doing 1001 reasons was smart and it was the same person who was in this smart group that I decided to connect to so you see it's not like I was just joking sometimes people just feel like oh she's just saying that because maybe she likes the person or something or something or something oh yeah but I kind of like smart people it's a normal thing to like smart people because you can have a, an honest and intelligent conversation with them you bore me out if you're not smart. <laughs> I'm just being sincere though. You bore me if you're not smart. And believe you me, the conversation will not last long because I'll find a way to stop it. I'll find a way to run, to dodge. So thank you so much, Mr. Fononary, for the um, wisdom tips that you normally post with your 1001 reasons. I'm really grateful. I told him that we're going to try to do that and try to put that in audio version. So a lot of people can also listen because there are lots of people like me who don't like reading or like listening. So I wanted to reach out to those people who like to listen to stuff rather than read. But I've been caught up and like I said, I still need to get a new laptop so that I'll be able to do that and then um, get these people on. But I'll start trying with my phone for now. I'll start doing it with my phone and then hoping that eventually we'll be able to do better happy birthday to you so let's take that again happy birthday mr search and gambar happy birthday ma'am lois peters happy birthday mr chidi Berry ernest happy birthday Bote noir happy birthday to ma'am alima naru nuradin happy birthday to mr olale Khan adebut miti happy birthday to 
Sir Honoré Rudolph James Fun. Happy birthday to you all. So let's pray for the birthday people and get right on with our Bible party. Lord, we thank you for this beautiful day that you've made. We rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, we thank you for adding one more year to the lives of these people. Even as their year starts today, oh Lord, I pray that you're going to open the pages of their lives and write beautiful stories that will cause them to smile, dance, sing, and rejoice for the rest of their days. Lord, if you're tired to come, same time next year, they'll be here giving testimonies of the beautiful things that you will do in their life throughout this year. That this year is going to be their best year yet. Open the windows of heaven and rebuke every devourer in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I pray that you cause them to be trailblazers, space setters, and wall changers in the mighty name of Jesus. Let them shine brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. So the glory of your name, Father, cause them to increase in wisdom and stature, gaining favor before God and before men. Causing their, let their gifts make them to stand before kings, not before mean men in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I pray that you're going to favor them in every way, in every area. Perfect all that concerns them. Give them a sound. So one, two, and a six state, a state where they're going to be in continuous laughter and singing. You put laughter in their mouths and singing on their tongues, oh Lord. That is going to be a moment of rejoicing as you keep turning around things for their favor. Father, I pray that you're going to strategically position their destiny helpers all around them. That when they need help, help is going to show up. And I pray that you're also going to open their eyes to see that they are supposed to be destiny helpers to some people as well. And they are going to take up their duties and their delegations when the time is right. Lord, we know that every single person, while we're fulfilling purpose, while we're on track, sometimes we feel overwhelmed and we feel like we want to give up or back out. We can't do this anymore. That each and every one of them is going to hear a clean and clear voice, very loud. That's going to say to them, this is the way, walk thou in it. Lord, I pray, O oh God, that you're going to teach them all that is necessary and it's needed for them to get to the top and stay permanently at the top. Father, I pray that you're going to guide and direct them, O oh Lord. Open doors that only you can and shut every door that is not of you. Father, I pray, O oh God, that you're going to make them to be able to know what needs to be done, when and how, and they will step on it every single time. Lord, that you're going to cause their hands to make well, to prosper. Whatever they lay their hands on, prosper it, O God. Wherever they tread their feet upon, give it to them as a possession in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I pray that you're going to cause them to be trailblazers, pace setters, and wall changers. Give them all that it takes to be able to go and conquer their world in Jesus' name. Divinely disconnect them from people and things that will cause them to stagnate or retrogress, and divinely connect them to people and things that will cause them to progress and be the best version and fulfill purpose. Thank you, Heavenly Father, because I know you always hear an answer. Lord, let your blessing encompass them as a shield round about, so no weapon formed to fashion against them shall prosper, and cause them to be a blessing in their generation and beyond. Considering the fact that the blessing will be in an overflowing manner. Let anybody who comes in contact with them literally rub off of these blessings. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, King of Glory. Because I know you've heard an answer. Let money meet money in their pockets. Blessing meet blessings in their lives. Favor meets favor in their lives as you clothe them with a garment of praise, honor, and favor to the glory of your name. Let people see your good works in them and glorify your Father who is in heaven. We seal every prayer with the blood of Jesus. And we pray that it will be so as we've prayed in their lives. Thank you, Lord, because we know your prayer and showing God. And it is settled already. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let it be so. Amen, 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 amen. In their lives. Amen. As we've prayed. Amen. Let it be so. Amen, 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 amen. In their lives. Amen. As we have prayed. Amen. 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 Let it be so. Amen, 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 amen. In their lives. Amen. As we are praying. Amen. 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 <laughs> okay, people, that's it for the birthday people. Let's get on to the Bible party. Ready or not, here I come. Welcome to all those who are in the live stream today. If I've not said hello to you, don't be mad at me. Welcome, Mr. Victor A. Dogu, aka VAD. The music minstrel, the hummingbird, the guy can sing for the world. <laughs> okay, people, let's get ready. Are you ready? Ready or not? Here I come. Welcome, Mr. Quine Joshim. Welcome, welcome, welcome. God bless you. 
it's a chapter a day if you're just getting in and today we're reading numbers chapter 28 let's get the bible party started Numbers chapter 28, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Command the children of Israel, and say unto them, My offering and my bread for my sacrifice is made by fire, for a sweet savour unto me, shall ye observe to offer unto me in their due season. And thou shalt say unto them, This is the offering made by fire, which ye shall offer unto the Lord, two lambs of the first year, without spot, day by day, for a continual burnt offering. The lamb shalt thou offer in the morning, and the other lamb shalt thou offer at even. And a tenth part of an ephah of flour for a meat offering, mingled with the fourth part of an hind of beaten oil. It is a continual burnt offering, which was ordained in Mount Sinai for a sweet savour, a sacrifice made by fire unto the Lord. And the, da and the drink offering thereof shall be the fourth part of an hind for the one lamb. In the holy place shalt thou cause the strong wine to be poured unto the Lord for a drink offering. And the other lamb shalt thou offer at even as the meat offering of the morning and as the drink offering thereof. Thou shalt offer it a sacrifice made by fire of the sweet savour unto the Lord. And on the Sabbath day, two lambs of the first year without spot, and two ten deals of flour for a meat offering mingled with oil and the drink offering thereof. This is the burnt offering of every Sabbath besides the continual burnt offering and his drink offering. And in the beginning of your months, ye shall offer a burnt offering unto the Lord. And in the beginning of your months, he shall offer a burnt offering unto the Lord, two young bullocks and one ram, seven lambs of the first year without spot, and three ten deals of flour for a meat offering mingled with oil for one bullock, and two ten deals of flour for a meat offering mingled with oil for one ram, and a several and a several ten deal of flour mingled with oil for a meat offering unto one lamb for a burnt offering of a sweet sorrow, a sacrifice made by fire unto the Lord. And their drink offering shall be half an hen of oil unto a bullock, and the third part of an hen unto a ram, and a fourth part of an hen unto a lamb. This is the burnt offering of every month throughout the months of the year. And one, ki and one kid of the goats for a skin offering. And one kid of the goats for a sin offering unto the Lord shall be offered besides the continual burnt offering and his drink offering. And in the fourteenth day of the first month is the Passover of the Lord. And in the fourteenth day of this month is the feast. Seven days shall unleavened bread be eaten. In the first day, in the first day shall be an holy convocation. He shall do. Sorry, people. I'm so, so sorry about what just happened right now. <laughs> my mom kept buzzing my phone and buzzing my phone. I was actually freaking out. And then for some weird reason, I was trying to turn off the thing and I turned off the entire stuff. <laughs> I'm so, so sorry. So let's go back. We're going to start reading again. Um, like I said, today we're reading, uh, we would have to read from some other place, some place else, not on the phone like we normally read. So if you see me looking on one side instead of directly to the phone, you have to bear with me, okay? So we're going back, we're reading Numbers chapter 28 and it has 31 verses. So I hope you're with me and we can do this right, okay? Ready or not, here I come. Let's get the Bible party started. Numbers chapter 28. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Command the children of Israel and say unto them, My offering and my bread for my sacrifices made by fire for a sweet savour unto me, shall ye observe to offer unto me in their due season. And thou shalt say unto them, This is the offering made by fire, 
which he shall offer unto the Lord, two lambs of the first year, without sport, day by day, for a continual burnt offering. The one lamb shall thou offer in the morning, and the other lamb shall thou offer at even, and a tenth part of an ephah of flour for a meat offering mingled with the fourth part of an hin of beaten oil. It is a continual burnt offering, which was ordained in Mount Sinai for a sweet savour, a sacrifice made by fire unto the Lord, and the drink offering thereof shall be the fourth part of an hen for the one lamb. In the holy place shall thou cause the strong wine to be poured unto the Lord for a drink offering, and the other lamb shall thou offer at even, as the meat offering of the morning, and as the drink offering thereof, thou shalt offer it a sacrifice made by fire of a sweet savour unto the Lord. And on the Sabbath day, two lambs of the first year without spot, and two tent deals of flour for a meat offering mingled with oil, and the drink offering thereof. This is the burnt offering of every Sabbath, beside the continual burnt offering and his drink offering. And in the beginning of the month ye shall offer a burnt offering unto the Lord, two young bullocks and one ram, seven lambs of the first year without spot, and three tenth and three tenth deals of flour for a meat offering, mingled with oil for one bullock, and two ten deals of flour for a meat offering mingled with oil for one ram, and a several tenth deal of flour mingled with oil for a meat offering unto one lamb for a burnt offering of a sweet savour a sacrifice made by fire unto the lord and their drink offering shall be half an hin of wine unto a bullock and a third part of an hin unto a ram and a fourth part of an hin unto a lamb this is the burnt offering of every month throughout the month of the year and one kid of the goats for a sin offering unto the Lord shall be offered, besides the continual burning offering and his drink offering. And in the fourteenth day of the first month is the Passover of the Lord, and in the fifteenth day of this month is the feast. Seven days shall unleavened bread be eaten. In the first day shall be an holy convocation. He shall do no manner of servile work therein. But ye shall offer a sacrifice made by fire for a burnt offering unto the Lord, two young bullocks and one ram, and seven lambs of the first year. They shall be unto you without blemish, and their meat offering shall be a flour mingled with oil. Three ten deals shall ye offer for a bullock, and two ten deals for a ram. A several ten deal shall thou offer for every lamb throughout the seven lambs and one goat for a sin offering, to make an atonement for you. Ye shall offer these besides the burnt offering in the morning, which is for a continual burnt offering. After this manner ye shall offer daily, throughout the seven days, the meat of the sacrifice made by fire of a sweet savour unto the Lord. It shall be offered besides the continual burnt offering and his drink offering. And on the seventh day ye shall have an holy convocation, ye shall do no servile work. Also in the day of the first fruits, when he bring a new meat offering unto the Lord, after your weeks be out, ye shall have an holy convocation, ye shall do no servile work. But ye shall offer the burnt offering for a sweet savour unto the Lord, two young bullocks, one ram, seven lambs of the first year and their meat offering of flour mingled with oil, three ten deals unto one bullock, two ten deals unto one ram, a several ten deal unto one lamb throughout the seven lambs, and one kit of goats to make an atonement. Hmm. <sighs> But ye shall offer the burnt offering for a sweet savour unto the Lord, two young bullocks, one ram, seven lambs for the first year, and their meat offering of flour mingled with oil, 
three 10 deals onto one bullock, two 10 deals onto one ram, a several 10 deal onto one lamb throughout the seven lambs and one kit of goats to make an atonement for you. Ye shall offer them besides the continual burnt offering and his meat offering. They shall be unto you without blemish and their drink offerings. Okay, people, that's it. That is it. Well, here it was basically instructions that God was giving to the children of Israel and he was given to them so that they should remember and they should put in practice whatever he has told them. There are some things that we still do till date that was done in the old. There are lots and lots of things. The, the most important one that I really like for, for the most part is... The one that I like for the most part is actually communion. We used to do communion in the old and we're still doing it till date, you know. So there are lots and lots of things that God wanted us to remember. I don't know Easter. I don't know about Passover. But I think we still celebrate some things that are close to that. That make us understand this. So mostly I believe that when something is passed on to people. If... Um, if it's written down, it's easily remembered. But when it's said and done and seen, it lasts longer. So I believe that's what was happening. And God wanted them to practice it. And I'm sure at some point it became a lifestyle. It became a part of them. So they were just doing it already. The Passover was supposed to be there. It had to be a remembrance because they had to remember. Um, God had already told them that they should tell their children how they were saved, how they were delivered from Egypt and all those kinds of things. Of course, we need those stories and we need those back stories because they help us to understand where we came from and where we are at the moment. So some of those things also helps boost our faith. We know that if God could bring us from this level and we're at this place right now, then he can take us to the next place, obviously. So if we're going through tough times, if we're going through difficult moments, we know that if God brought us through this thing that seemed like the most difficult thing that ever happened to us, then he's definitely going to bring us through with whatever we're going through right now. You know, there could be nothing really bigger than them being in slavery, you know. Like, that was the worst thing that could happen to anybody in those days, to be a slave, because it was the hardest thing to get away from. They used to have like 50 years after 50 years that you're emancipated and all those kinds of things. But it wasn't actually the case with them. But fortunately for them, they didn't stay in Egypt for how many years did they stay there again? It was long. They actually stayed in Egypt for a very long time. And then they cried out and God heard their cry and came and saved them. So they needed to remember that. Sometimes some of us, when we get to a high level or a high position or we grow, we kind of look down on the places or the people or the, the environment where we grew up in. It's so sad and it's so bad. It is, it is ugly. It's not a nice thing. We need to know where we came from and revere that place. I'm not saying that you should just be careless or something but hey this is where you came from there are some people that as much as cannot even talk to people in the area where they came from really really what's the difference between you and snobs welcome to mr muna tete thank you for coming god bless you i'm glad that you stopped by even if it was just for a moment and uh to master graves of funny's black belt academy all right so you all stop by, uh, I think, momentarily, but that's good. If you're just getting in, it's a chapter a day. We study the Bible together and uh, say what we understand in every chapter that we read. Today, we just read Numbers chapter 28. And I'm saying a few things that I think are important to me that I saw. So, yes, this is exactly what I noticed in the scripture. Like, all these things that God was giving them to put into practice and to continue doing is because he wanted them to, he wanted them to keep in remembrance and they should not forget where they came from so that they'll be able to trust God more and trust him better for whatever was going to happen to them eventually. You know, if God could single-handedly bring them out of Egypt, out of slavery, out of Egypt, that was like the strongest 
powers that existed as at that time if god could bring them out of there then there's nothing else that god cannot do for them but hey you know as it always gets to be there will still be some times that will doubt god will not believe that he can do whatever he says he would do it's painful but god will have to help us to behave ourselves in and, and get to believe him some more and get to trust him some more sometimes i don't know what happens to us um i don't know about every other person but sometimes i don't know i guess it's just some kind of fear or looking at the situation getting too focused on the situation is the same thing that happened to peter peter said lord if it's you bid me come and he believed when god said and as long as his focus was on jesus he was walking on water but as soon as the storm started raging and he removed his focus from jesus to the storm he started sinking that's exactly what happens to us and that's what i believe happens to a lot of people to me as well sometimes i kind of remove my eyes from god i know that god can do those things i know he has brought me through things that are worse than this one so i know he's definitely going to br bring me through this one but sometimes the problems just become so overwhelming it's like they're choking you and then you're kind of like focused on the problem what is this trouble i don't like this thing and you're just so focused on the problem and you you've removed your focus and your gaze on jesus and that's why you're sinking and that's why it's like the program the problems are just choking you they're about to choke you to death or something you have to re return your focus to the right place when you have your focus right you get easily um you get to easily win the battles you get to easily get through those scenarios and those situations but when you are not when you are not connected to god when you are not connected to god you miss it you so so miss it so people i don't know about you but we have to get to learn some of those things that God wants us to learn so that we can be able to transfer it down to our children. There's some things that are happening to you that you'll be able to transfer it down to your children. Um, God said he was going to tell Moses everything because he knows that Moses is going to transfer it down to his children and his children's children. When God is sure that whatever he teaches you, you're going to be able to transfer it down. He makes covenants with you and gives you opportunities that a regular person who is not going to do that will not have them. So it's very important for us to make some of this um, decisions to to say we're going to transfer down to our generations upon generations. If God lets us stay that long and if he tarries to come, that we should make sure that we'll pass on what God is teaching us to the next generation. And that's why we're here doing some of these videos because those people are going to listen to those videos if we're not here even if i'm not here today i'm listening to late dr miles Monroe's messages i'm listening to what's this other guy again there's some other big person who died it's not belong some big evangelist i'm not sure what his name was there are lots and lots of people who have died recently i'm still listening to their messages and i'm being blessed i'm late um bimbo dukoya i still listen to our messages and I get blessed. So um, if I'm not here today, someone could still listen to this message and get blessed. That's me in a way transferring down the virtues and some things that the Holy Spirit has taught me, which is a beautiful thing. So I don't know about you. Um, what are the various ways in which you can actually put down something that the Spirit of God has taught you? Is it in writing? There's some people that are good at writing. Is it talking like I'm doing right now? There's some people who are good at it. Maybe yours is you're going to record the message before you put it on. That's fine too. Maybe you just need to go live and, 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 and talk to people. That's fine too. You know, just find a way to pass on what God has released upon you to other people it is beautiful it i don't know how to explain how beautiful it is it feels fulfilling it feels i don't i don't know how to explain it like words fail me really but you feel how your heart is just joyful it's just oh my god i don't know how to explain the feeling but 
if you do it you're going to experience it so i wouldn't need to explain it to you you're going to just experience it there are some things when it comes to christianity that i believe that no matter how you explain it people are not going to understand it until they experienced it and i know that one of those things one of such things is salvation no matter how i explain salvation to you until you have the encounter you would really not grasp the beauty of it I mean like when I'm talking about my salvation, when I just mention salvation, I can literally see myself when I gave my life to Christ. I, I know exactly what I was wearing, where I was sitting in church, the message that was preached, what happened. I mean I, I, can, I can narrate the sequence of the, from the time that the message started to the time that I spoke with my pastor who was first of all in total dismay and shock that I wasn't born again. I was a church girl, I was a religious person, but I was never born again. Well, I'd given my life to Christ before and I'd taken it back. Yeah, basically that's what it was. I'd given my life to Christ before and I'd taken it back. So um, I was actually, basically they would say I was rededicate, rededicating my life to Christ, but I think I'd say that was the first time I was actually giving my life to Christ because the experience was it was outright gorgeous. It was drop dead awesome. It was psychedelic. Words cannot describe it, man. I let's just take a glimpse of how exactly the Salt and Paul experience happened. Do you think for any singular reason till Paul died, he could forget his salvation experience? No, let's be real here. Forget spirituality. Do you think that that particular encounter that Saul had with God that changed his life forever? You think he can forget that experience? It's unforgettable. That's how your salvation experience is. So I'll be so shocked if I ask someone for their salvation experience and they cannot tell me. I basically can't remember the hours and the minutes, which I wish I could. But I can't remember the hours and minutes, but based on when church starts and when church ends, I could say I could have an averagely, an average time in my head that it could be. But no, the day I have it right there. The month is so obvious and so clear. That's it. So people, I don't know. I don't know exactly what it is that God has taught you and he wants you to pass it down. You might not only need to pass it down to your children or children's children. You can also pass it down to the people that are around you. Your friends, your parents, relatives, loved ones, your colleagues, whoever. Just, just name it. There are lots and lots of people around you that God wants you to pass on whatever he has given to you, whatever he has ministered to you. He wants you to pass it on. And so he might make you to start doing it like a routine thing and eventually it becomes a part and parcel of your life or the lives of the people around you i wish i also had something really routine and really beautiful just me and god like that <sighs> yeah the people of israel had all the special things and special times with god i kind of envy them sometimes you know but here yeah, you can also create that kind of um, special moment with god is what a lot of believers call quiet time you can actually create that kind of special moment where you have a conversation with God and God is telling you things and showing you things. There are various reasons why God shows some people some things, not only about them, but about people that they care about, about people that they love. Wouldn't it be a good thing if you could always see ahead of time some things about your family members, your parents, your relatives and loved ones that you could avert if you knew about it before time? Because of course, that's the only singular reason why God will tell you something before time. So that you can prepare, you can um, get ready for it. So that if it comes, you probably have a shock absorber, it's not going to affect you. Or you've already um, conditioned your mind for whatever is going to happen. Or you can be able to even just stop it entirely for it not to happen. That's why God tells you in the first place. That's why he tells you beforehand. But there are some cases that are just sad cases. Just so sad people are not ready to do nothing they just there they just don't want to do nothing so people that's exactly what we have for today tomorrow is going to be another day 
Exodus chapter 20, Numbers chapter 29, forgive me people, Numbers chapter 29, and we're going on slowly but surely, we're almost getting down with the fourth book of the Bible, and we'll definitely be jumping in and diving into Deuteronomy, which is the fifth book of the Bible. So we had a great time today, I don't know about you, but I'm hoping that you should read um, Numbers chapter 29 before we come back here tomorrow so it's not going to be a monologue it's going to be a dialogue you're going to be able to be talking while i'm talking to i know mom tipa mary's actually got here but the thing went out so some people missed out i thank you all i appreciate you all for always being here so lord we pray that you're going to teach us to be able to pass on that which you've le you've taught us that which you've shown us oh god that we're not going to be greedy but we're going to be good we're going to be nice and do the things that you want us to do the way you want us to do them thank you heavenly father thank you king of glory because i know you always hear and answer be thou exalted lord i pray that your word is going to be engrafted on the fleshy tables of our hearts so that we're going to be able to live thereby and we'll end up being living a pistols red of men to the glory of your name in jesus name we pray amen i always get to say i love you so so very much but god loves you way way more get to like share and subscribe don't forget to hit the notification bell so you get all our updates each time we we'll upload a new video. We'll get to go live just like now. Like I always say, if you desire to get the audio Bible, just let me know in my inbox and I'll definitely, definitely send it out to you. We're hoping to put it on all of the social media platforms, but for the moment, we'll just have to manage watching it only on our YouTube channel. Until tomorrow, ciao, ciao. Have a great weekend.